والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم مثل الذين ينفقون اموالهم في سبيل الله كمثل حبه انبتت سبع سنابل وكل في فلك يسبحون ويخلق ما لا تعلمون السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Peace and Allah's mercy be upon you and welcome to Universal Quran Alhamdulillah, all praise belongs to Allah alone we ask for his blessings and peace upon his messenger and prophet Muhammad. The Quran is Allah's universal revelation to all of humanity. All of mankind within their hearts desires to worship and know their Lord. It's part of our fitra or the innate moral nature on which every human being was created. The human being desperately desires to know for what purpose was I put here on the earth? Why is there good? Why is there evil? What am I supposed to do with my life? This is a universal concern for everyone. And the Quran provides the answers to those people who will sincerely search within its pages for divine guidance. The Quran is a universal revelation, meaning that it contains the words of Allah, spoken by Allah, written down in heaven on the preserved tablet, carried down by the angels to the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. The Qur'an is preserved for all of us in its original form. In the, every word, every uh, meaning has been preserved for us. All we need to do for guidance is to sincerely ask Allah to open our hearts to understand the meaning of this message and He has promised to guide those people who are sincere and have even an atom's weight of faith or trust and belief in Allah within their hearts. But the human being is weak. The human being is that creature who is forgetful of his origin, forgetful of his creator, and so pleased with himself, so uh, proud of his achievements that he neglects to worship and humbly submit himself to his Lord, so he shuts off himself from his pure inner nature and instead deludes himself with this world. For this reason, we are attempting to study the Qur'an to enlighten those people who have become lost and gone astray from their inner urging to worship their Creator that with Allah's help we may be the cause to guide even one person to the truth of the universal Qur'an. We're currently studying from the 29th section, Juz Tabarak, uh, and we're reading today from chapter 77, Al Mursalat. In our previous discussion of the meaning of the verses of this chapter, we understood that Allah had asked, um, Did we not destroy the ancients before? If you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot take you into account for your actions in this world, and that the punishment of Allah cannot befall you, but that you are guaranteed success regardless of whether you believe or disbelieve or accept or reject the message. Did not people of the past, were they not destroyed for their sins? And think of the examples of Noah and Moses and the many examples recited in verses of the Holy Quran about the peoples of the past who were destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but none can oppose him when he wills to destroy them in this life. And if, therefore, that is true, and of course it is without doubt that it is true, then are you any different than those people of the past? Is there anything that you can do to protect yourself, anything that you could do to, to uh, withstand Allah's punishment if it were decreed for you? And of course the answer is no. And so destruction is the destiny of those who are wrongdoers, or the translation said criminals, that means those who reject Allah and, and work wickedness and evil here on this earth. And so Allah says, Wailun, woe and doom upon those people who deny the Holy Qur'an. And that's where we're at now. We're going to read from verses 20 through 
through 24. Um, we have our brother Fayruz, who is the reciter of the Quran for us in the Arabic language. And brother Tahseen will do the English interpretation. So if you could please read from 20 to 24, please. Alam <laughs> nakhlukum فجعلناه في قرار مكين فجعلناه في قرار مكين إلى قدر معلوم فقدرنا فنعم القادرون ويل يومئذ للمكذبين Thank you. Did we not create you from a worthless water? Then we placed in it a place of safety for a known period. So we did measure, and we are the best to measure. Woe that day to the deniers of the day of resurrection. So these verses repeat this, this condemnation of those people who reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for other reasons. The first people were those who uh, disregard the fact that Allah has destroyed those people who have rejected Him in the past. And he can easily destroy those people of our generation if he so wills. He is all powerful and able to do so. Then he asks us about our origin. And this is a theme that has been repeated in this section of the Quran in many different verses. So it's obviously very important for us to think about the origins and the creation of the human being in various stages. So in verse 20, did we not create you from worthless, despised water, a liquid which is discharged from your parents, from the father and from the mother, which is something disgusting that nobody would like to handle or touch. But from this is our origin. Therefore, how can we deny our Creator? How can we reject Him and not worship Him? In verse 21, And then this water was placed in a place of security, a secure place. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designed the womb of the mother to be a safe place for the gestation of the fetus until it develops into a, full, a fully developed human child. And so a place of security, protected in layers of protection of the liquid and the skin and the bones that are around them, so that it's protected from all kinds of events that happen around them. Even very often you will hear about in the news or read in the paper, a woman has been in an accident or killed or murdered, and the baby is saved. The baby is secure even though terrible things have happened to the mother and the baby is born alive and is able to live its life. And so very often the child is in a great amount of safety more than the mother who of course has the ability and power to protect herself like any other human being and so she cannot protect herself but her womb is still a safe place for her child. And so we imagine that we are so great and powerful and yet Allah can protect this perfectly helpless infant within the womb of the mother in a way that we are not even able to do for ourselves. It receives all of its nourishment, everything it needs. If the mother is lacking nourishment and is not healthy and is not taking in enough vitamins for herself, the child takes what it needs first from through the um, umbil umbilical cord and gets all of its nutrition and the mother gets whatever is left. So the mother could even be deprived of nutrition and the child would still be fully developed if in Allah wills and be born healthy. And <coughs> within, within God's will, it would be born and be provided its own provision and be able to be cared for by its parents. What period is this? 22, verse 22? For a known period. This term is known as the customary period, which is approximately nine months. And in fact, the, the obstetricians, the doctors who are specialists in this, can tell you to the day how much how many days it takes uh, for the uh, average child to be born uh, to a very accurate extent. But sometimes it's less and sometimes it's more. Children are born prematurely and sometimes they take a little bit longer time. And that period is known to Allah, while the period that we know is the customary nine-month period that is, of course, universal for all people in all places. So every child is born under the same circumstances. The, the child of, of the queen of the billionaire is born in the same birth that the child of the peasant and the person living in a village somewhere in a third world country with very little. They all have the same birth. The majority of children are born in a healthy way, even in the poorest countries, and are able to have their living and their parents are able to support them. The reason that 
we have starvation and disease and famine in most of the world is that human beings withhold some of Allah's provision from each other. Through their injustice, they refuse to share their obligatory wealth that they are supposed to share with those less fortunate. But Allah has decreed through the cause and effect that all of us get our provision. So I can't get my provision unless I go out and work for it and seek a living. And some people's provision depends on others. And so I can't work, I can't get my provision unless my boss pays me. So Allah has willed my rizq to come through that person. The same with the poor and unfortunate. Allah has willed that their provision come through the wealthy. And if the wealthy withhold, then they will not receive what has been uh, commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In verse 23, so we did measure and we are the best of measurers. That, that period is known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He decrees the measurement of their lifespans. While the child is still in the womb, the angel is sent and writes down the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the lifespan of that individual, if they're going to be successful in this life and in the hereafter, if they're people of hell or heaven, and how wealthy or how poor they're going to be. All that is known to Allah and is decreed and is recorded by the angels. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who best measures this. The people who reject this message, the idea that the human being was born weak, cared for and protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and given the great blessings of His uh, abundance and provision are the denizens of hell in the hereafter. So Allah repeats, woe to them, destruction and doom upon those people who deny that they will be held accountable for their actions on this earth. Let's read verses 25 through 28, please. أَلَمْ نَجْعَلِ الْأَرْضَ كِفَاتًا أَحْيَاءً وَأَمْوَاتًا وَجَعَلْنَا فِيهَا رَوَاسِيَ شَامِخَاتٍ وَأَسْقَيْنَاكُمْ مَاءً فُرَاتًا وَيْلٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ لِلْمُكَذِّبِينَ Thank you. Have we not made the earth a receptacle for the living and the dead, and have placed therein firm and tall mountains, and have given you drink, Sweet water, woe that day to the deniers of the day of resurrection. Thank you. So, in contrast, Allah said in verse 20 that He had put this despised water, this insignificant fluid, into a safe place for the gestation of the child. Now, in verse 25, Allah is saying the human being in general was placed in the earth as a safe, strong receptacle for the human being. Everything that we need is provided us here on the earth and it keeps us safe. The atmosphere protects us from the dangerous radiation of outer space and everything that is provided for us, fresh and sweet water. Even people in, in the desert, the people in Mecca, had fresh sweet water coming to them from springs by Allah's power. We're going to go for a break and we'll come back with Universal Quran. <laughs> Quran, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the miraculous words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah the Most High spoke the Quran. It's the thing between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are we given the rights of the Quran? Are you ready to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment for the Quran to take us from our hands to the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do we go through every verse in the Quran to get to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us? Watch Huda TV. Quran in depth. Welcome back to Universal Quran. We're reading from chapter Al Mursalat of the Holy Quran. Before the break, we're discussing the verse uh, number twenty five. Through 28, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that He created this earth as a safe receptacle for the development of the human being where we find all of our provision and we're kept safely so that we can make the decisions whether to follow our Lord and worship Him or reject Him. Even the dead are kept, sa are kept safely within the sphere of the earth 
they are buried below while the human beings who are alive are on the surface. And so as the ancient Arabic poetry says, we can't walk proudly on the earth boasting because we're stepping on the dust of our ancestors, on the dust of our fathers. So we should be humble walking on this earth. Let's continue and read from verses 29 through 34, please, Fairuz. انطلقوا إلى ما كنتم به تكذبون انطلقوا إلى ظل ذي ثلاث شعب لا ظليل ولا يغني من اللهب إنها ترمي بشرر كالقصر كأنه جمالة صفر Thank you. It will be said to the disbelievers, Depart you to that which you used to deny. Depart you to a shadow of hell fire, smoke ascending in three columns, neither shading nor of any use against the fierce flame of the fire. Verily, hell throws sparks huge as a fort, as if they were yellow camels. Woe that day to the deniers of the day of resurrection. Thank you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us what can those disbelievers who reject the Quran, who deny the prophet, prophethood of the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's blessing and peace be upon him. What will be said to them on the day of judgment? Depart, go ye out from before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, depart to that which you denied. So the punishment which is appropriate is that when you have denied something and you see its reality, then you're cast into that which you have denied. That is the fitting conclusion of those who have rejected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to describe, the, so you can visualize hellfire in the amazing reality of it, if you could just imagine how it looks. That is a place where there is a shadow in three columns. In verse 30, a shadow ascending of smoke in three columns. So the shade of the people of hellfire is not something cool and beautiful and restful. restful. The shade is what is coming from the horrible smoke that is coming from this horrible, huge columns of fire, three prong columns that are ascending uh, and uh, over, the, over, the belie- un- over the unbelievers who are trapped below it. The fire is on all sides of them and above them and they're trapped and sealed in a tight, confined space beneath this huge, powerful force. In verse 31, this shade is neither of any use. It's not cool. It doesn't protect you from the heat, but it is simply one aspect of the fierce uh, heat coming from the fire. There's the flame and there's the smoke. Is the smoke probably hotter than the fire itself? And so it's an example of the, the huge kind of forces that you will find in hellfire. The only forces in this universe that could be compared to it are the forces of the stars, the huge explosions on the surface of the sun. If you've seen pictures of these huge balls of gas, and nobody can even imagine what the heat of those balls of gas in the suns are, but the suns and all the stars are just one portion of the heat which is found in hellfire and reserved for a punishment for the unbelievers. In verse 32, Allah says that the sparks from it are as huge as a fortress, a huge, amazing thing. Of those are the sparks which are coming out of this heat. You can see how it's towering, like these uh, coming out of the surface of the sun. That's just an imagination. Uh, if we could see and imagine how the sun is and its heat and greatness, and compare that as something insignificant compared to hellfire. In verse 33, that its color is yellow or a brass color, like the yellow camels or camels that uh, the yellow camels in Arabia were black camels that. Part of their, 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 their hair is, is turning toward yellow color and it's partly black. And that's what they used to call the black camels or brass colored camels or bundles of ropes as when, they, when bundles of ropes for ships were tied together and so they were thick cords. All just explaining th- what the sparks coming out of this fire are. Like you can imagine the sparks shooting out of the sun, those we call the solar flares. And when a solar flare comes, it affects communication throughout the world. It affects radio waves. It messes up communications throughout the world. 
And these are pictures from gases in outer space that are towering, huge thing, balls of gas of that same kind of color. And they look like pillars or columns, similar to what is being described in these verses of the Holy Quran. And so Allah says once again in verse 34, Woe to them, uh, destruction and doom upon them, because they have denied the day of resurrection, and now that day has come, and it's too late for them to believe in it, because now it is appearing before you. Let's read verses 35 through 37. That, that will be a day when they shall not speak, and they will not be per- permitted to put forth any excuse. Woe that day to the deniers of the day of resurrection. Thank you. Verse 35. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, On that day, on the day of judgment, when the human beings are gathered before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one is allowed to speak except for those who have been permitted by the All-Merciful to speak. Those messengers who are given permission will speak and intercede on behalf of their followers, the believers who have followed their message and believed in it. But nobody has the ability to speak and in verse 36, they will not be permitted to bring any excuses or to fight or deny. Even when they are brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are presented with their book of their evil deeds, they will not be able to deny them. They may put up an excuse, but they cannot say this did not happen. But they may be able to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, I had a reason uh, 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 and try to think of a reason to excuse themselves. But in the end, they will be forced by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to admit by the truth of their deeds, which they will see, their own body parts will bear witness against them, their hands, their eyes, their ears, their feet. The whole earth will bear witness against them and they cannot deny. And they will admit that they deserve to be put into the punishment of hellfire for their wickedness and evil on this earth. And so Allah says to them once again, Wailun, uh, woe upon you, doom and destruction upon you because you have denied this day and here this day is before you and now you cannot speak, you cannot bring any excuse to excuse your actions before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's read verses 38 through 40. <laughs> That will be a day of decision. We have brought you and the men of old together. So if you have a plot, use it against me. Woe that day to the deniers of the day of resurrection. Thank you. So in verse 38, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, That is the day of decision. When the decision is made, nobody can act, nobody can speak and bring any excuse. The decree of Allah is final and there is nobody who can escape from Allah's judgment. On that day you will be gathered together with the people of all the generations of this earth. So you will never be able to say that it's somebody else's fault, it's the previous people who have misled me, but they will be there, each one, as a witness against you. So even if people of the past had false teachings and they spread false teachings and, and misled you, yet they will witness that I didn't force him to follow me, but he chose to follow me and I misled him, uh, and I'm going to go to hell, and he has to go to hell too. And so those people who are misled will say, oh, the people who have misled us deserve double the punishment. But that will not be any good for them because they also will be punished, and it will be of no satisfaction to them that those who have brought them to hell will also be punished, but will be having a double punishment in hellfire. But all the people who are condemned to Allah's punishment will be full of regret and wish that they had changed and could go back to the earth and live their lives over again the right life. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how about a kid? I mean, when his family is bringing up in a Christian family, and then he dies before hearing about Islam and all that. So, mm-hmm. will he enter the paradise? Yeah. You know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said that, of course, He created every child as a Muslim, but their parents mislead them to their particular religion or particular philosophy or atheism or the culture in general leads them astray. But a child is not held responsible. To until they become mature. If the uh, child dies, 
uh, before they become physically and mentally mature, then they're innocent and they will not, of course, be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they are innocent and they are born Muslims and so they're dying as Muslims. They have not yet uh, sinned or committed any evil, but they are still on their original fitra. Once a person becomes mentally and physically responsible for themselves, then they are an adult they have to make their own decision and choose their religion and then they will be held responsible for their decisions based on whether a, prophet mes a prophet's message has come to them or not. Now, if they lived on this earth and never heard about Islam, never heard about the Prophet Muhammad, nobody explained Islam to them, they have an excuse because Allah said He never punishes the people till first He sends them a prophet, a messenger. And so, if they say to the Allah SWT on the Day of Judgment, uh, no messenger came to me, I never heard about Islam, no, nobody made da'wah to me or taught me about this message, then Allah will say, well, if I give you a command, will you obey me? And they will say, yes, of course, I will obey you, O Allah. And so Allah will make a fire and said, my commandment is that you enter the fire. And if they obey, they will enter the fire, they're in Jannah, they're in paradise. And if they disobey, they'll be cast into hellfire because they disobeyed Allah. And so the people who were not tried and tested in this world will have to be tried and tested in the hereafter. And Allah may make an easier test or a harder test depending on the sincerity of the faith which is in their hearts. And Allah knows best that, and He is all wise and He would never punish anybody who did not deserve to be punished. And He is the most merciful and the compassionate. And so in these verses Allah is saying, if you have a plot or a plan in verse 39, then come ahead, go ahead, use it against me. The people who died before, they're here. Everybody's together with all of our ancestors up until Adam. They're all together. Those who were punished in the past and destroyed in the earth because of their sins, they're there. But yet you survived and you were not punished. How can you claim that you who followed their actions, those people of the past, how could you claim that you should not be in hell when they were destroyed and punished in this world for their sins and yet Allah allowed you plenty of time to live a long life and yet you still led your whole life vainly hoping that you could repent uh, when death came to you or when the Day of Judgment appeared. So it's too late. Do you have a plan? Do you have some way that you can escape from Allah's decree? No, of course, Allah is the best of planners and the best of plotters. Nobody, no devil, no human, no jinn can escape from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan. Um, the Prophet said, all of the servants, all of the people in the world cannot benefit Allah or harm Him in any way. That's all we have time for right now. Please join us for our next episode of Universal Quran. <laughs> Well, who